call this meeting to order. <laughs> right, so this is the process. All right, our first item is to approve the agenda. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? All right, thank you. Next, we need to move, approve the minutes from the April 18th regular session and the May 2nd work session. So moved. Second. Okay, Michael. All in favor? All right, let's say that passes. Great. Word zero. Thank you. Sure yes, I do. <laughs> All right, next we have recognitions by Anissa Sullivan Jimenez. Good evening, Mr. Superintendent and board members. If you'll please come forward for this month's recognitions. And as you come up, I will note that. The art display this month is provided by students of Malcolm Ridge Elementary School, and their instructor is Lee Rogers. And that art display is right out here in the hallway. And we will start off this month with the Pursuit of Excellence Award. So, honorees, when I call your name for any of these awards, please come up. You'll accept your certificate, and then you'll shake the board members' hands and wait in the middle for your photograph to be taken. So first, the board will recognize the May Pursuit of Excellence Award winner in the category of Support Personnel, and the winner, winner is Ms. India Caudill, bookkeeper from Column Ferry Elementary School. Ms. Caudill will receive a $50 Visa gift card and golf umbrella provided by Peach State Federal Credit Union. Chops and Hops also donated a $50 gift card, and she's being presented with a plaque as well. So Before I take your picture, you get to hear what those who nominated you for the award had to say about you. Ms. Caudill is always helpful, knowledgeable, and professional. She goes the extra mile for Colin Ferry, and she could never be replaced. India joined us in the middle of COVID. She faced the challenge of learning a new position while we all navigated through uncharted waters. She jumped right in, fit right in with us, and is still going strong. She helps out whenever she can, wherever she can, never complains, interacts wonderfully with anyone who walks in the front office. I'm so happy she's a part of our team. Another said, India is the picture of professionalism. We are so proud to have her at Column Ferry. And then finally, from Principal Tony McCullers, he said, Ms. India Cottle is in her second year as the bookkeeper at Column Ferry Elementary. She is an organized, detailed professional who accomplishes her daily financial tasks with a positive attitude. She's one of the smiling faces in the CFES front office available to greet visitors or to assist parents when a question or concern arises. She frequently aids the faculty and staff with their needs so they may continue to focus on teaching and learning. She's a lifelong resident of Oconee County and takes pride in her former school, Oconee County Intermediate School, which is now Column Ferry Elementary School. For all these reasons, I am so proud that Ms. India Cottle has been named this year's Pursuit of Excellence recipient for support personnel. Congratulations. <laughs> Grace Canavage, 
Charlie Rachel, Kiara Moore, Sam Snyder, Jackson Tucker, Ellie Atkins, Aaron Knapp, Abby Clark, and advisors Drew Doss and Kay Williams. A round of applause. And now I will name who won individual awards. And Mr. Doss, if I could give you those certificates to hand out. Um, so the individual who won first place in the state for rhetorical essay, Juliana Hyunga. And then second place for Girls Trio, Grace Kanavich, Charlie Rachel, and Kiara Moore. Second <laughs> for International Extemporaneous, it's second place in the state, Ella Stillian Southard. For Domestic Extemporaneous, second place, Landon Vaughn. Argumentative essay, third place in the state, Sam Snyder. And then finally, humorous interpretation, third place, Jackson Tucker. Can you get in a little closer? <laughs> Joshua Walfel, Nathan Doe, Alexa Martinez Avila, and Trainer Mooney, and their advisor David Chapman. Congratulations. I want to get y'all's picture. Yeah, y'all come and kind of stagger in between the board members if you would. Good job. 
great job. Thank you. And finally this evening, the board will recognize the GSEF Junior Division Awardees from Malcolm Bridge Middle School. First, we have Anika Macheri. She won fourth honors, and she also received at the science competition the Naval Science Award and the UGA Physics and Astronomy Department Award. Congratulations. <laughs> We have Roshan Selvaraj, who won third honors, and he also received the UGA Microbiology Department Award. Congratulations. Also with third honors, we have two more students, Brooke Costigan and Alana Grace Ondick. Come on in. And their advisor, Elizabeth Patrick. Please join us for the photo. Congratulations. Congratulations. being the best elementary school in the county, culture diversity is the first thing that comes to mind. While we may be small, we cover a good bit of the globe. And I'm a student saying the next part. That's the pause. Of writing. Okay. you may notice when entering our buildings is multilingual signs labeling the important spaces in our building. The rooms are identified with the most common spoken languages by our families. Currently, our signs include Arabic, Chinese, Gujarati, Japanese, Korean, Russian, Spanish, Portuguese, and Urdu. These languages change as needed based on enrollment. When you head down our main hallway to and from the bus entrance, you will notice our many flags. The flags represent countries from which current and former students have listed as their country of origin. This is added to each year based upon enrollment as well. And those were the flags that you were seeing there. At Malcolm Bridge Elementary, we currently have at least 11 different primary home languages spoken and at least 16 different countries of origin listed. This data is self-reported and does vary as enrollment fluctuates each year. This year, we have implemented morning meetings as part of responsive classroom, and several of our teachers have embraced celebrating um, cultural diversity during their morning meetings. Um, one grade level went through um, different countries each day for two weeks to expose those students to a variety of cultures. And this is an example of one of the things that the teachers shared. Um, they would begin by showing where the country of region is so that they can find it on the map, and this one is of Italy. And then next they would introduce a common greeting and show a brief um, video overview. So this would be part of their, their morning meeting where they would um, all practice saying hello in Italian by saying ciao. So then they would introduce something from the country that they've adopted. So this slide was shown during a morning meeting and students were asked um, to share their favorite sport. So during the morning meetings the students have to um, have a share part, and so they got to go around and talk about their favorite sport. 
And then during the activity time um, of the day, they would relate the information covered. In this example, it was a tabletop soccer game. On another day, students had to problem solve by changing places on a log as if they were a lemur from Madagascar without falling off. <laughs> and one of our teachers um, has five Korean students um, in her classroom. And so this is one of the things that she did was letting some of the students teach the uh, other students how to say different phrases in um, Korean. And so um, the students all came up with Wait, they came up phonetically with how to say it <laughs> instead of like having to write out Korean. So th this is the phonetic way that the students in the third grade classroom um, decided that they wanted to say it um, so that they could pronounce it correctly. Um, also, our art and music teachers have worked diligently to em emphasize the importance of various cultures throughout history um, in art and music. So in art, we have K, K through two students who created art inspired by cultures from seven continents. Um, for example, kindergarten learned about the line and pattern and created rugs inspired by carpets of India, um, Turkey, and Iran. First grade students studied architecture from various countries and designed their own buildings. First grade students created lionfish inspired by Chinese fairy tale titled Yi Shen, which is very much like Cinderella. Students compared and contrasted the tales before making their fish. Second grade experienced holidays and celebrations from around the world and created Mexican-inspired mirror art. Third through fifth grade students were exposed to American contemporary artists from minority and marginalized groups encouraged to use a variety of these styles as inspiration for their personal creation. Our art teacher, Lee Rogers, wanted all students to see artists who look like them and share their culture and background and learn from a variety of perspectives. And in music, students learn to sing songs and play instruments from different countries. For example, first and second grade learned um, a folk dance from Denmark in addition to learning other folk dances and songs. Second, third, fourth, and fifth grade students have learned about the history of classical music and its roots in Austria. They learned about beautiful Austrian concert halls, the Vienna Philharmonic Orchestra, and German and Austrian composers such as Mozart and Beethoven. Fourth and fifth grade students have learned the history of African American spirituals and learned to um, sing the African American um, spirituals that were contributed to in the different styles of jazz music. Students in all grades have learned about and played percussion instruments from around the world. And one of our biggest highlights this year was Diversity Night. Back in September, we hosted our first diversity night, and we plan for this to become an annual tradition. We're already recruiting parents to help for next year. Some of the countries highlighted during our first night included India, Korea, as well as several countries from South America and Africa. This event showcased our diverse student body, and it allowed families that normally don't feel comfortable coming in and volunteering and helping out the opportunity to feel comfortable leading an event because they then became the expert in that area. And so it allowed us to get a whole different population of parents involved by providing them a time to share their rich story as well as their expertise. The evening began with parents coming and students coming and enjoying a picnic meal from a Jamaican food truck while watching performers on an outdoor stage. Performances included a group of Irish dancers from students around our county, a group of Indian dancers comprised of our fifth grade, some of our fifth grade students. Mrs. Shen, who is one of our teachers, played the zither while wearing traditional Korean attire. Um, students demonstrated taekwondo. There was an Australian didgeridoo performance, a Brazilian capoeira performance, and students sang guapo in a variety of languages. Then following these performances, students could enter the building and they got a passport and they went around to rooms where parents and families had set up displays from their country and continents. And the students would go into the room to participate in the display. Some they could make things, some they could try out different instruments or different activities or different games and they'd get their passport stamped and they'd go on to the next place. Uh, represented here were India, Korea, South America, Africa, Italy, Russia, and Australia. So next year we've already had parents say, well, I want to come and I'll represent China, or I want to come and I'll represent this. So we truly anticipated growing, which is exciting. Um, we love that this event encouraged so many new families to get involved. <laughs> Gracias por su tiempo. Tengan buen día.
So thank you very much. We do appreciate your time tonight. And the languages spoken tonight, the first student was Korean, the second boy was Italian, and then Spanish. So we appreciate your time tonight. So you have anything else? Thanks for being Just a comment. Sure. Um, congratulations for what you're, what you're talking about here. <clears throat> you know, I think we all know the world is, is a big place. It's smaller every year. But I think your efforts to show these young kids that the world doesn't stop at the borders of Oconee County, but goes much beyond that with with multiple cultures, uh, is to be uh, is to be commended. And I think it's just one another example of why our school system is so so valued and so successful is because of the work that that, that you just talked about right there. So congratulations, good Thank job. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Now we have communications to the board, and we'll start with business services and Liz Harlow. Good evening, board members. Business services has eight items of information and two action items for tonight's board meeting. The first item of information is the April cash balance report. The second item of information is a list of all vendor payments in April. The third item of information is the budget report for April, and revenues and expenditures are where we would expect at this time of year. The fourth item of information is the ELOS collections report. The rolling average is 15% over the previous year, and this month's collections are 15% lower than the previous period last year. The next item of information is the board report for ELOS 5, and is every month. The revenues and expenses have been updated as of April 30th. The next item of information is the board report for ELOS 6. Revenues and expenses have been updated as of April 30th. And as requested, future bond payments for each calendar year have been added to the report. The next item of information is the federal funds report for April. The report has been updated as of April 30th of this fiscal year. And the last item of information is the budget development calendar. As a reminder, the FY 2023 tentative general fund and federal fund budgets were presented at last week's board meeting and are action items for tonight. The general fund budget and budget hearing dates will be advertised in the Oconee Enterprise this week. The dates for the budget hearings are set for May 16th and 23rd. Both budget hearings will be held at 4 p.m. And as requested, at last week's work session, we have the breakdown of the unencumbered expenditures shown on the FY23 budget summary for general fund. And we also have a history of millage rates going back to 1999. As a reminder, the FY23 tentative budget includes a tentative millage rate of 16.25, which is a reduction of 0.25 mils. 16.25 uh, is the lowest millage rate overall that we have had since 1999. And that concludes my report, unless there are any questions. Questions? Comments? Um, thank you. On the unencumbered balances, um, is the Maybe, maybe that's what that adds up to. What you're showing is the unencumbered balances of in this in this list. That's the 7.1 figure. Yes, sir. It's just not total, but that's, that's what that all adds up to. Yes, sir. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, let me go back to the uh, e-loss collections first, and we'll talk about the budget in a second. Um, I, I noticed it caught my eye that the March collections uh, were down 15%. But I started looking at that a little closer. And obviously you have too, I suspect. And to me, that seems to be a little misleading because, well, why don't you explain why that's a little misleading to you? I suspect you, you may know it better than that. Well, last year there was a significant, there was a significant amount that we received that like was higher than... 70 plus percent increase. Yes. Sir. Yeah. So, even though that shows a decrease, if you, if you just compare that, the, number, the collections in March of 22 to March of 20, it's, it's over 45% increase above March of 20. So 
my, my intuition tells me, yeah, it's showing as a decrease because it's showing over such a monstrous increase last year, the same month, for some reason that we're not sure why. But if you average out those two years, it's probably still more than a 15 or 18 percent increase year over year uh, for two years. Right. Okay. So I think what I'm trying to say is you're continuing your trend of significant increases in sales tax collections uh, since you took over, and this is just an aberration that's not really reflective of, of reality, correct? Yes, sir, that's correct. <laughs> <laughs> uh, thanks for the millage rate uh, chart you put together. It's interesting. Two things, two things strike me about that. Uh, one, it reminds all of us that there was a time in our not too distant past where we were actually assessing and collecting property taxes to pay for capital construction, to pay off the bonds for buildings that we now have all over our county. And we've kind of lost, I think we've lost sight of that as a practice that we no longer have to do because we have the, the benefit of local sales tax collections and our ELOS that obviously are continuing to grow pretty, pretty strongly. So it's it's really allowed us to, to lessen the burden on the local taxpayers through property taxes uh, because of that ELOS. And your chart kind of brought that back to me. I knew it, but I don't think I'd seen one go back that far. And uh, so the fact that it, you know, 20, 20 years ago, we were leveling over two mills just to pay debt on buildings that we, that we had long since occupied is kind of telling. The other thing is, you only went back to 99, maybe that's as far as you could go, but I guess what you're telling me is you have to go somewhere back into the last century to find a millage rate for total school operation, total school requirements that's lower than what this budget is predicated on, correct? I mean, you're showing 1999 and it's still 16.4. Uh, the lowest was 16.3 in 2002. This budget is predicated on 16.25. So somewhere back in the last century, maybe, it was down at 16.25 or less, but you'd have to go back at least that far uh, to find the low limit for school, for school requirements. Liz, I want to I say, one, I, I appreciate the way you've presented this budget, the way you've answered the questions, uh, and the way you've anticipated some of those things and ensuring that, that sound practices were, were practiced. I think you've done a good job in presenting this budget and preparing it. So, first of all, so that. Um, I have always believed that there are at least two fundamental things that our budget should do. Uh, first, it should meet the investment needs and priority needs of our school system, whatever those are from year to year to year. Uh, and the second is I think it needs to be a financially stable and balanced uh, fiscal plan both currently and also in anticipating uh, future needs and future circumstances that maybe we can't know today, but we certainly need to be thinking about it and preparing for them. And I believe you've met both of those requirements in this um, in this budget uh, in, in putting those two things forward. Um, a wise old speaker of the house once told me, he said, son, if you get 80% of what you want in a budget, you need to smile, call it a good day's work, and go home. Uh, budgets are always about compromise. Competing priorities, competing needs, and priorities that, that, that have to be balanced to come forward with a budget. Uh, I think you've achieved that as well. I think the board has achieved that. Uh, it's clearly met 80% of what I would call our priorities and needs and balances, uh, and so for those reasons, uh, I'm going to support this budget. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now, time for public communication. No one signed up. Okay. Great. So, we will move on to action items, I believe, by French. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, board members. Um, thank you for those kind of words about the budget, Liz. Did work very hard on that, as did the team. So appreciate the, uh, the board's input and, and support of those items. Uh, a couple items we have tonight, including the budget. Uh, first up, CTAE local plan and grants. And you've seen that uh, before you, so we recommend approval as presented. Okay, we have a motion. Questions approved. Second. All in favor? 
passes four to zero. Okay, up next is one of our uh, field trips that will be taking place this summer. We'd recommend the approval of Oconee and North to do a field trip FBLA to Chicago uh, June 28th to July 3rd as presented. Okay, any motion? Second. Second. Purchase. All in favor? Passes 4-0. Okay, we'd recommend the uh, surplus vehicle. That was presented last week. Uh, we'd recommend surplusing that vehicle, so recommend as presented. Okay. Do we have a motion? So moved. Purchase. Second. Ransom. All in favor? Passes four to zero. Okay. Uh, Dr. LaDuff would like us to approve a $58,540.58 <laughs> dishwasher. Uh, <laughs> and so we were, we were recommending that for Oconee Primary. Uh, as presented. Okay. One question. Does Dr. LaDuff have a pertinent interest in this uh, machine, uh, in the past presence, past work, or is this for future work? It's for future work. <laughs> Do we have a motion? So moved. Timbers? Second. Second. Wayne Bagley. All in favor? This is four to nothing. Four okay. to zero. Four to what? All right. <laughs> We'll reflect that in the minutes. <laughs> <laughs> you got that so <laughs> uh, Up next is the uh, tentative budget for FY23. We recommend that as presented. Okay. Do we have a motion to approve the tentative budget? Motion to approve. Michael Ransom. Second. Burgess, all in favor? This is 4 to 0. Okay. And up next is the federal fund budget. Uh, as a reminder, this is kind of a pass-through budget uh, that Liz has presented for you, so we would recommend that as approved. Okay. Do we have a motion? Move approval. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Michael Ransom, all in favor? Passes 4-0. All right. That concludes that yes, portion. Okay. Now we do have a uh, need to move into executive session, and we'll need a motion to do that. <laughs> Please, Mr. Burgess. Board will adjourn to executive session to discuss or deliberate upon official matters as described on the affidavit to be attached to the minutes. Okay, thank you. Do we have a second? Second. Mr. Ransom, all in favor? Passes four to zero. We'll adjourn to executive session.